Hello and welcome back to Microbial Concepts. Today we are going to discuss about chitin and chitosin and somewhat about cellulose also. Okay, so you will find this video helpful if you have practicals like isolation of chitin degrading bacteria or isolation of cellulose degrading bacteria. Okay, so this is the brief video about all these terms. You will get uh, information about what is the difference between these, what are their structure, okay and what are their applications okay so as chitin uh, sorry as chitosin is related to chitin you may also get questions on chitosin okay and nowadays a lot of research work is going on on chitosin and it is very helpful okay it has many applications okay so we are going to discuss about these natural biopolymers here so let's start so first is chitin so chitin was first discovered by Professor Henry Bracknot in 1811 and he isolated it from mushroom and named it as fungin. Okay. In next subsequent years, other discoveries related to cellulose and chitin or chitosin, they happened. Okay. So why chitin is promising? Okay. Why are we now focusing on these biopolymers? Okay. Because the reason is because they have some properties like chitin is abundant then chitin is biocompatible it is biodegradable then it is non-toxic and has affinity towards proteins and it is renewable okay so that is why chitin is promising and nowadays we have a very good option to work on okay in in we can, we can say related to uh say medical research or agricultural research okay you can find many applications good applications with respect to chitin or chitosin okay so and then second point is it is a natural polysaccharide and it is second abundant organic source on earth okay so the first abundant source is cellulose then second is chitin okay then you may isolate or get chitin from crabs shrimps arthropods mollusk shells and fungi okay then what is the difference between cellulose and chitin okay so if you have this practical for isolation of cellulose degrading or chitin degrading bacteria then this is the very first question that you may get that what is the difference between both of these structures or both of these compounds okay so it is let's see first about cellulose so cellulose is a monomer unit uh, it has d glucose and chitin is a monomer unit which has n acetyl d glucosamine okay so this is the very basic structure uh, sorry basic structural difference okay then cellulose it occurs in cell wall of plants and algae and chitin it occurs in cell wall of fungi and arthropods then cellulose it does not contain nitrogen in structure okay you can see below the structures are given so you will not find nitrogen in cellulose okay in the structure of cellulose but in case of chitin you will find nitrogen okay then the last point is strength of cellulose polymer matrix is comparatively low whereas strength of polymer matrix is higher due to the increased hydrogen bonding capacity in chitin okay so if you get this question in viva at least mention three points out of these four okay then what are the similarities between cellulose and chitin okay so the both of these uh, natural biopolymers they are polysaccharides and they occurs in cell wall of organisms okay both of the similarities they find in the cell wall you can find these uh, cellulose and chitin molecules in cell wall of organisms but which type of organism you will find cell wall is different uh, cellulose is different and for chitin the source may be different okay then second point is both are insoluble in water then both forms crystalline nanofibrils or viscous okay you, you can also form some uh, nanoparticles okay of chitin or chitosin right then the main function of chitin and cellulose, uh, cellulose is to provide structural support okay so the function 
of cellulose and chitin in organisms is to provide the structural support okay so in short i had mentioned about cellulose also okay, right so now we will be discussing about chitosan right so first you just remember it it is a derivative of chitin correct it is not similar to chitin it is derivative of chitin it has deacylated chitin or we can say it is a deacylated form of chitin that means the acetyl group is removed from chitin okay so it is a linear polysaccharide composed of randomly distributed beta 1 4 linked d glucosamine okay that is deacylated unit and n acetyl d glucosamine okay that is acetylated units so you will find some amount of acetyl acetylated units and some amount of deacetylated units okay so the amount of deacetylation or the percent deacetylation in chitin will differ okay and that will give you different types of chitosan okay so if you had um, if you follow a protocol for making chitosan and if you are able to deacetylate the chitin say 75% then the chitosan that you will get you will name it as 70 75% deacetylated chitosan okay so the percent of deacetylation differs and likewise the viscosity the solubility and some other properties of chitosan also differs okay so when you are working with chitosan it is very important to know the percent deacetylation it is also known as degree of deacetylation we will see that in further slide okay so i hope up till here you are okay right so the third point in case of chitosan is it is a cationic polyamide and which has ph ranging from 4 to 6 okay so it is made by treating the chitin from any source that you may get and you can isolate chitin say here for example shrimps or crustaceans with alkaline substances okay so alkaline treatment is given like any oh and some enzymes to get chitosan from chitin okay so it has a number of commercial possible agriculture and biomedical uses increasing interest in chitosan is due to its properties like it is natural it is non toxic it is biodegradable high water holding capacity and soluble in dilute acidic solutions okay uh, to enhance the solubility of chitosan mostly glycyl acetic acid is added okay and it helps to dissolve the chitosan it is bit difficult you need to agitate your solution your mixture for some hour or you may also use heat to enhance the uh, solubility okay so these are some properties as i told you they differ depending upon the daa that is degree of deacetylation okay so the solubility is affected by degree of deacetylation the viscosity is affected the molecular weight of chitosan that you get is also different each time depends on degree of deacetylation okay so what is that degree of deacetylation in chitosan so degree of n acetylation which is by definition the molar fraction of n acetylated units okay so in uh, structure of chitin the molar fraction of n acetylated units that is def uh, defined or that you can name it as degree of n acetylation okay but when you remove the acetyl group it becomes deacetylate right so we are studying here chitosan right so this definition is related to the chitin okay so that's why it is named as degree of n acetylation which is by definition the molar fraction of n acetylated units is the structural parameter influencing the charge density crystallinity solubility including the ability to enzymatic degradation with higher da's that is degree of acetylation 
leading to the faster biodegradation rates okay so this was all related to chitin now the degree of n acetylation that is in chitin and degree of d acetylation that is in case of chitosin with molecular weights are very important parameters for their characterization okay so if you are doing a small project related to chitin or chitosin then you need to check the degree of n acetylation in case of chitin and in case of chitosin you should know degree of d acetylation okay then why it is important because the molecular weight will change the solubility will change the viscosity will change okay so these are very important characteristics which you need to mention when you communicate your research okay so chitosin the viscosity and solubility depends on molecular weight and the degree of deacetylation so degree of deacetylate degree of deacetylation is determined by nmr spectroscopy okay so by doing nmr spectroscopy you will get to know the degree of deacetylation right so when you write a research paper you do all the research but when it it comes to writing a thesis or communicating your research work you need to mention these small small things okay so do check these characters or these parameters related to your chitin or chitosin then next is applications so applications of chitin and chitosin or chitosin derivatives okay there are many chitosin derivatives i am not mentioning here those okay i will mention i will uh, upload uh, another video related to chitin and chitosin's derivatives okay this is just for masters uh, students who want to know uh, or who want to get the brief concept and some examples structures applications for that purpose this is the video okay you can refer this video say before going to your practical exams so that you can revise what are the applications what are the difference what are the similarities correct so here we are going to discuss broad applications related to chitin and chitosin okay so first in agriculture chitin and chitosin they are widely used as plant elicitors okay so what does this term means it means that the chitosin will boost the plant's own defense system okay or boosts plant's own defenses against pathogens okay so it will act as a defense system or it will help the plant to uh, manage the pathogens attack okay or the plant can defend when there is a infection okay the chitosin it also has antimicrobial activity so it is also used as antimicrobial agent it is used for seed treatment for seed coating okay so uh, it is widely used for getting resistance sorry not resistance getting um, control over fungal infections in case of plants in agriculture okay so it is used in seed treatment seeds are coated previously before sowing and then the seeds are dried uh, after coating and then they are used for sowing purpose okay so even after harvesting your fruits and vegetables many times it happens that fungal or bacterial decay uh, takes place okay so that is known as post harvest decay okay so to prevent that chitosin uh, solution is applied as a spray formulation okay to control your post harvest decay in case of fruits and vegetables and the very important point here that chitosin till some extent is edible okay so there is no harm using as a spray formulation to control the post harvest decay in fruits okay the next is in water treatment it is used as coagulating or flocculating agents for pollutes water waste so for treating polluted water waste okay there is a mistake here for treating polluted water waste then next in biotechnology as enzyme immobilization material and in chromatography packing 
in food and health supplements it is used as natural thickener and in process like filtration or clarification it is used and it is also used as preservatives as it has some antimicrobial properties right and lastly in biomedicals it is helpful in healing burns wounds and as anticoagulation while surgery okay then next is it is used as biomaterial means it has uh, properties due to which it is used as absorbable sutures okay then it is also used in drug delivery and lastly it is used in tissue engineering okay so you can at least mention three to four applications from this right so this was about chitin and chitosin and a little bit we discussed about cellulose here okay so i will be uploading another video related to the practical and viva questions for cellulose and chitin degrading bacteria okay so i hope this is helpful to you all please like to my videos share these videos with your friends subscribe to my channel and also follow me on instagram by same handle microbial concepts thank you